my name is Tony Hutchinson of Reality Solutions and I'm going to quickly show you how to create a supplier in Sage 200. So what we go is into Purchase Ledger, we go into Supplier List and we have our list of suppliers. At this point we can just click on New Account. Now for today we're just going to go through a very basic supplier with no major information, just the basics so it's a nice quick uh, lesson. So first of all, we have the first tab, we go to the code and we give it a code. Of course, this can be auto number depending if it's set up in the actual company settings. So I'm just going to create a new code called TH001 and I'm going to put myself as a new supplier. Now the short name is automatically populated. I can leave it as is, which usually we do. Then of course the currency, pound sterling, if we're using multi-currency, of course, change it to what it should be and then a credit limit and I'm going to say £2,000. Put your address in, so these are all the basics of any supplier or any customer. So I'll just put something in there. Oops. I'll just put a random postcode in there and then of course my telephone and fax and website if I have one. Next we go to the bank tab and of course if you're going to be paying the supply by banks you will need to put some actual bank details in there. So of course sort code and account number and then of course the account name so I'm just going to put a Hutchinson and any payment reference so I'm going to say it's going to be TH001. Okay so I'm just going to check I've got eight characters or two four, six, eight. So of course account numbers are eight characters. Next we go to the contacts tab and we can actually see we've got no contacts set up. So I'm just going to edit the default one and just say the contact is myself. Oops, I'll change caps. And then I can just again put telephone number mobiles in. I'm just going to leave this blank for now and just OK. Now I'm set as the default for accounts and sending of remittances. Of course I can add in extra names and change names within here to say whether or not I send a remittance to a different person or if it goes to one person. Again, that's we won't go through that today because that's a bit more advanced. Next we go into the trading tab. The only thing I really need in here is of course is the VAT number of the supplier. So I'm going to put that in now. And of course, keep transactions for however many calendar months you want to do that. And of course, your default nominal code. If the supplier always uses the same nominal code, it's worth setting that at this point. It is a default, so it can be changed at a later date. Next is the payment method. We're going to say it's an open item, which is usual. And the important part here is this payment group. And we're just going to select it's going to be by a box. If it was check, of course, you wouldn't need to put the bank details in. Credit, we don't need to do anything about it at the moment. Attachments, memo and so on, we're just going to leave. And at that point, we can click Save. If I now refresh my list, I can see now my supplier is now set up where I can actually do transactions against that supplier. I hope that's helped and it's a nice quick tour of creating a supplier in, say, 200. Thank you for listening.